Hi guys, Zyga here, welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a shop system in Unity. So without further ado, let's begin. And as per usual, the source code will be in the description below if you want to get straight into it. So on the screen right now, you can see some of my past projects where I've made this shop system. And essentially, we are going to be using 2D arrays to handle the shop system itself. Now, I'm not going to be explaining line by line in this tutorial, because otherwise it will be too long. However, as I said, the source will be available in the description below with comments if you want to go more in depth about it. So let's begin. The first thing you want to do is create a canvas, so press UI and then canvas. On here we're going to right click and press once again UI and add ourselves a scroll view. Now essentially we are going to be displaying items as buttons and I'm going to use a scroll view just to make things look a lot cleaner. On our canvas set the constant pixel size to scale with screen size and select this overlay to camera. Then all you have to do is just drag your camera in. Let's double click on our canvas to zoom in. The scroll view itself, just go ahead and adjust the size like so. And on the background, I'm going to set this to be completely transparent, but you can set it to whatever you want. Then if you open it up, we're going to delete the vertical one. And on the horizontal, I'm going to set the height to be zero. This basically makes it completely invisible so we can't see it in our game. Next thing, open up the viewport and select this content area and scale it to the whole screen size like so. On here, we're going to add two things. First of all, we're going to add a content size filter like so. And on the horizontal fit, I'm going to set this to be preferred size. And the next thing I'm going to do is add a horizontal layout group. And I'm going to set this to be middle left. I'm going to set my spacing to be around 27, but you can play around with this however you want. After doing this, I'm going to right click on this content and just press UI and add a button. You can see our button has been created. I'll set the width to 180. And I'll set the height to 180 as well to make it a square. Then a couple important things we're going to do is we're going to open this up. And this text, we're going to change this to be price TXT. I'm going to then just change it to be at the bottom right here. And I'm just going to type zero for now. I'm also going to increase the size a little bit so it's going to be easier to, for us to see. I'm then going to duplicate this and I'm going to call this quantity TXT. And I'm going to drag this to the top like so. And basically on the text, I'm going to align it to be on the left a bit and just set the size maybe like so. So essentially in our game, this will be our quantity and this will be our price like so. Final thing, I'm going to right click and press 2D object sprite and I'm going to give it one of the sprites that I want. So I've gone ahead and imported four different images for our items, but for your case, do what you want. I'm going to set this red potion cover thing here. Now we can't see it at the moment, so I'm going to change it to this and essentially just increase its size. Set the order layer to be one so we can see it above. I'm going to position it and change it to wherever I want it. So for example, like right here. Now I know this doesn't look the best, but this is literally just for tutorial purposes to show you what you can go ahead and do with this. But you can literally be however creative you want. I'm then going to call this icon. So this is our item one and we will add more items in a moment. However, let's set out the scripts first. So the first thing we need to do is press add component and type in button info. Press new script and then press create and add. After your script is opened up, we can go ahead and remove the start function as we won't be using it. At the top, let's go ahead and add using Unity Engine dot UI. This basically will allow us to use UI for our text. Then what I'm going to do is create a public int called item ID. I'm also going to make reference to our text by typing public text called price text. And also, let's copy the same thing, but this time call it quantity text. Finally, we will need to make reference to our shop manager. Now, this doesn't exist yet, but we can make the reference anyway. So type public game object and call it shop manager. Now, essentially, this is all we have to do here for now, because we can't actually do anything else until we make the shop manager script. So let's exit out of it. I'm then going to right click, press create empty, and this will be our shop manager. Let's add component and let's just call this shop manager script and press new script and create an ad, and then just go ahead and open it up. So once you've opened it up, there's a couple of things we're gonna do. Let's delete these two comments to start off with, and let's actually set up our array. So to do this, we're going to make public int, then I'm gonna do some square brackets in which I'm gonna write a comma, and then the name of our array. I'm just gonna call this shop items. And then I'm gonna make this equal a new integer, and once again, we're gonna do square brackets, and then depending on how many items you want in your script, this is where you're gonna change it. Now, in my case, I'm going to have four items, but I like to go one above, so I'm going to press five. And then on a rows, I'm only going to be re really using three rows. However, for the purpose of the video, I'll just put it five as well to make it nice and simple. Next, I am going to make a public float called coins. Now, this is just once again for purposes of the tutorial itself. You will probably most likely have a currency in your game already, but if you don't, just follow what I'm doing. 
Finally, we need to once again do using Unity Engine UI. So I'm just going to copy this right so and type dot UI. I'm then going to make a public text called coins txt, like so. Now for starters, let's grab a coins txt and in here type coins txt dot text and make this equal these little speech marks, coins, a little thing like so, and then press plus and coins like so. Now let's do the bracket like so. Now sometimes this has an issue, so if you want to, you can do two string like so, and this will uh, hopefully fix the issue because obviously it's a float and we're converting it to a string. So finally in the start method, we are going to initialize our array. Now this is a really simple way of doing it. All you need to do is type in shop items because that's the name of our array. Once again, we're going to do the square brackets in which we're going to start with column one and point one as well, because that's the first point in us. And we're going to make this equal one. Now, basically what we're going to do is we're going to set up the IDs. So the column one will be our IDs. So because I have four items, I'm going to copy this four times. However, I'm going to change the next number to two, three and four. I'm also going to change this to two, three and four because they will have different IDs. Now, technically we can start at array zero. However, there is some complications. If you try and save this array using player prefs, you will need to start from one because it doesn't allow you to use the zero default. So that's literally why I'm doing it. However, if you are not planning on saving the system, then you can just start with zero. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do price. So I'm just gonna add a little comment because it makes it a little bit cleaner. I'm then gonna copy and paste this right here. And we're just gonna change this value to be column two now. And then set the price to whatever you want. I'm going to set it to 10, 20, 30, and 40, just to make it simple. Finally, we're going to add the quantity. So once again, let's make a little comment and let's copy and paste this. Let's set this column to free now because we are going along the column. And I'm going to basically set this to zero because we haven't actually bought any of this arrays yet. So the next thing we need to actually do is create a public function where we can purchase the thing. So I'm just going to call this buy, like so, and I'm going to make it public so that we can access it wherever we want. The next one I'm going to need to do is actually make a reference to the button and the event system that's already in Unity. So let's create a new game object, and we're going to call this button ref. And this is basically going to be equal to game object dot find game object with tag. Make sure it's only one game object and not game objects. On here, we're going to then do some brackets and call event because that's the tag I'm going to use. However, you can use whatever tag you want. Dot get component. And in here, we're going to grab the event system. Like so. And then we're going to do two brackets like so. Full stop. And then current selected game object. Now, you might be getting an error on this. And if you are, then go to the top and make sure you add using unity engine dot event system. Now, this already added it to me when I just added this in here. But once again, make sure you do have this at the top like so. Next, we're going to check if we have actually enough coins to buy the item. So this is really simple. We're just going to use an if statement. And we're going to check if our coins are bigger than or equal to. And then really simple. All we need to do is copy shop items like so. So let's copy that. And let's have a look. So our price is on column two. So let's change this to two. And the final thing is, we need to check what ID we're going to press. And the way we're going to do that is using this button info script that we've created. So really simple, type in button ref, which we just made available right here. Press dot get component. And the script is called button info. Then do two brackets like so, dot item ID, because that's what we called it like so. And there we go. We're basically just going to check if we have enough coins to purchase our item. Now in here, we can do whatever we want. So what do we want to do once we buy an item? Well, let's first of all remove our coins. So let's do coins takeaway equal. And then essentially, we're just going to copy this line from here and just paste it in like so. Just make sure you add a semicolon. So now we're going to be subtracting the price of our coins from our coins in general. Next, let's go ahead and increase the quantity. So once again, we could just literally copy this because we don't need to type it out again. This time, change this number to three and add a little plus plus and a little semicolon like so. So we're basically going to increase our quantity. Final thing is we're going to want to update our text. So the first thing, let's grab our coins.txt and let's just copy this. And essentially, we're just going to paste it in again. So we're just going to update the coins after we, you know, changed it. Finally, we're going to update a quantity text on the button itself. So once again, this is going to be really simple. So let's type in button ref dot get component button info. Then we're going to do two brackets like so dot quantity txt because that's what we called it 
dot text, and this is essentially just going to equal this. So let's copy that, like so. Now this won't work just yet, and the reason it doesn't work is because this isn't actually a string, so type full stop to string, like so, two brackets and a semicolon at the end. So this is a little bit complicated for some people if you're a beginner, but essentially we're just updating the text whenever we purchase a new item. And that is our script finished. Let's go back to our button info and let's go ahead and add the update. So essentially let's go ahead and change this to start, like so, because we only need to do this in the start, we don't actually have to do it on the update. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to type in price.txt dot text is going to equal two semi, um, two sorry speech marks in which I'm going to type in price, like so, and then a dollar sign. You can make it whatever you want. And then we're going to add it with the shop manager. So we've made a reference to our shop manager. So type in shop manager dot get component shop manager script, like so, two brackets, full stop, shop items, because that's our array. And then our array <coughs> for the price is in column two. So copy that and then comma item ID. And then make sure you do set it to string because we need to convert that like so. Finally, that's just done at the start. And at the start, we're also going to do the same thing just for the quantity text. So copy the quantity text, paste that right here. And in here, just change this to free like so. We can also remove this price because we don't need that. And we are done. We can go ahead and exit our scripts. And let's go ahead and set this up in Unity. So once everything has compiled, let's start by clicking our event system. Click on the tag and press add tag. Press this little plus button and type event. As you remember, we did look for the tag, so we need to assign this by once again pressing event system and tag event. Then let's go to our shop manager. The only thing we need to do is the coins txt. So in our canvas, I'm going to right click, press UI text. I'm going to call this coins txt. And I'm just going to call this coins and just do this. I'm going to change the color to white so we can see it more easily and increase the font size. And then make sure you click your shop manager and you do put this coins txt in here. So finally, the thing we need to set up is the items itself. So first of all, this item ID will be one because it's the first thing we have. Let's open it up and drag price txt and quantity. And finally, for the shop manager, add the shop manager script here. Final thing we need to do is on the button, we're going to click this little bud add button, drag your shop manager, go into function shop manager script and select by. This basically is going to hook it up. So whenever we press the button, it's going to run that function. Finally, we need more items. Let's duplicate this item like so. Let's call this item two. And basically, we're going to duplicate it three more times to have four items like so. So let's then change the names of it. Final thing you have to do is make sure you do change the item ID. So this will be item ID two, this will be three, and this will be four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the icons and I will be back. All right, so I've gone ahead and changed the icons so they look different now. And basically, this is everything Everything is basically finished now. So let's press play and check it out. <clears throat> Actually, final thing we need to do is let's give us some coins. So I'm going to set this to a thousand for now for testing purposes. And let's press play. All right, guys, little error real quick. Make sure you change this void to be an update instead of a start. Otherwise, it doesn't actually update the text. So now when we press play, let's take a look if it works. And there we go. It has worked. So basically, you can see the price has changed at the bottom. And it's just basically grabbing it from the array itself. Now, if I buy this, I can click it and you can see that we have taken away coins and we have also increased the quantity right here. And this works for all of them. And as you can see, this is our shop system working nice and easy. So the last thing we can do is obviously we can save the system. However, I'm not going to be showing you how to do this in this video because it's going to be a little bit more complicated as we are going to be using outside scripts and sources. So if you have enjoyed this video, make sure to leave it a like. And as this video gets, let's say, a thousand likes, I will make the saving system tutorial for you guys. Thank you guys for watching and it would be really nice if you go ahead and subscribe to this channel because more tutorials will be coming. And if you have any tutorials you'd like to see, comment them down below and I will be answering your questions and hopefully I will do your tutorial in the next video. Alright guys, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.